when we start quilting, we want fabric and we want lots of it and we want it as fast as we can accumulate it. But later, as our skills improve and we experiment with quilt pattern and color, we can look at some purchases and wonder, what were we thinking? Today, I have five strategies to help you deal with ugly fabric. And stay to the end when I have a fast and easy quilt pattern. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. If you're new to my channel, I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And one of the best compliments you can give me is hitting that subscribe button down below. Sooner or later, we all have ugly fabric. Some we are given, some are in fabric bundles with other fabrics we love, and some we simply grow out of love with. Now, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Sometimes you just realize it's out of your color zone or you no longer like the pattern or simply you've matured as a quilter, found your groove, you found your style. This fabric is no longer appropriate for the type of quilting you like to do. The good news is there's lots of places and lots of ways you can use up ugly fabric. Right now, something very topical is making face masks and scrub caps. I'm gonna use up a ton of fabric that the patterns are just too large for me to use in my quilting. I'm not keen on pink, I'm not keen on flowers, and I find the scale of this print just too large for me to quilt with. So I often use these fabrics to make bags, whether they be grocery bags, shoe bags, or gift bags. I'm sure you have lots of other places that you can use them too. An important part of piecing is having a strategy to make the block. Though your pattern may say, so fabric A to fabric B and then to fabric C, you might find that after making the block, your block is small and you need to adjust your quarter inch mark or it's out of square, or you might see an easier way to do it. Or you find some aspect of the block construction quite fiddly. I don't make a lot of curves and I can easily get out of practice. So I always make a couple of practice pieces. And it's much better to make these mistakes and find the issues before you cut your good fabric. I have a stack of fabrics in my stash just for this purpose. You can also sandwich this fabric with batting scraps for making practice pieces for free motion quilting or testing out specialty stitches or specialty threads. We have many places that we need fabric that will never or rarely be seen. If the fabric is in the color of a quilt that you're making, you can cut it up and use it in the back of the quilt. I love this emu fabric in these two colorways, but I didn't like it in the third way, so I hid it in the inside of my retreat bag. You could also hide it inside of a wallet. I'm quilting this block and making a pillow out of it. No one will ever see the other side of this, so I'm using some ugly fabric here. I believe it was Bonnie Hunter that said, if you don't like a fabric, you just haven't cut it small enough. Simply cut the fabric into five inch strips. If you still don't like it, cut it in half to two and a half inch strips. If you still don't like it, cut it into two and a half inch blocks. You can use all of these in scrap sampler blocks. If you haven't seen my videos on scrap sampler blocks and scrap string blocks, I'm gonna link them in the notes below. I've had many subscribers ask me about the quilt pattern for this ugly quilt. And in my family, it's also known as the hospital quilt. The block for the quilt can be made in a variety of sizes, but for this quilt, we are going to be making a 12 inch finished one. And we will be making 12 blocks, three columns by four rows for a total of 12 and you'll need 12 fabrics. The quilt will finish 36 by 48 inches, which is a good lap size quilt. Alternatively, we can make a quilt four columns by five rows, which means you need 20 fabrics, and this quilt will finish 48 inches by 60 inches. So I'm making this stack of fabrics. I'm aligning my fabrics along the selvage and in this bottom corner. I'm alternating them light and dark. So 
square up along the selvage. Then cut a 14 inch square. When I have a 14 inch stack, I make a diagonal cut on the left side of the block. So I take the right piece from the top and I put it on the bottom. Then I make pairs, the top two together. And as you line them up, they're not quite going to match up perfectly. There's just gonna be a little bit of overlap on both sides. Then we sew. This is a bias seam and it's very stretchy. So be sure not to pull. Continue to sew the pairs together until they're all done. And then I press. Now I'm using my really good ironing technique. If you haven't seen my video on this, I'm going to put a link in the notes below. This makes a big difference in the quality of your blocks. And then I stack them again. And this time I make a diagonal cut on the right side of the block. And I take the top fabric from the right pile and I put it on the bottom. Then I pair, I sew, and I press again. Now we restack the blocks. This time we're going to turn the pile 90 degrees. But you're going to find that your edges are not going to line up very well, but that's okay because we're going to trim them down at the end. And we're going to make a diagonal cut on the left side of the block. And this time we are taking the top three fabrics and we're putting them on the bottom. Then we follow the same procedure. We pair, we sew, and then we press. And we stack them again, do a diagonal cut on the right side of the block, and then take the top three fabrics and we put them on the bottom. We pair, we sew, and press. Now I chose starting with a 14 inch block so that I could use my 12 and a half inch ruler to square up you may find you have a couple of blocks that are smaller than the 12 and a half inches. My personal rule is as long as I can get an eighth of an inch seam, I just trim them up at 12 and a half. But if you find that some are even smaller than this, you might just want to trim all your blocks a little bit smaller, maybe at 12 and a quarter or even 12 inches. And then I just lay these out on the wall. I get a lot of questions on what is my design board. It's just sewing hack number four from my video, 10 sewing hacks from the dollar store. I'll put a link to that in the notes below. I have two different types of blocks, one with the dark pieces in the corner and the other with the light pieces in the corner. And I am alternating these on the wall. This is a part that I try not to overthink. I usually put on my timer and I put them up on the wall and the only rule I'm trying to follow is I try not to have two fabrics touch. In the end, I normally end up with one and I don't really worry about it too much. And isn't it funny how these are all very different fabrics, very different patterns, but somehow your eye just kind of pulls it together and it's not quite so ugly anymore. Some of you might have noticed this really rough cut. When you're cutting through a large stack of fabrics like this, not only do you have to use your sharpest blade, but you should use your largest blade. So I have changed here to my 60 millimeter. Alternatively, you can also divide the stack into smaller stacks and each one can have a different cut pattern. Now you can make this block any size. You can use layer cakes. You can also make other size blocks with the leftover fabric from your original pieces. And I did that with my hospital quilt. If you use a different block size, just take a piece of paper and practice with a couple of cut lines just to ensure that you have, have consistent piecing sizes. Just note that you'll use up at least a half an inch within every seam that you make and you'll want an extra one inch for trimming. People might ask, why make an ugly quilt? It's a wombat. 
a waste of money, batting, and time. But the great thing about an ugly quilt is you use it where you wouldn't dare put a precious one. You can use it outside and not care if it gets dirty. You can take it on a picnic and not care whether food spills on it. Or like me, bring it to the hospital. Bring warmth, love, and color into a scary, lonely experience. And the funny thing is, is that because you're using it in all these places, there's wonderful stories and experiences that get attached to the quilt. And it becomes quite precious for those. For a hard copy of this pattern and any of my other free Stash Buster patterns, find them on my website at Just Get It Done Quilts under Patterns and Downloads. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell besides the subscribe button to be notified when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Get It Done Quilts. So take care and I'll see you next time.